Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where I I, I guess third time's the charm. <laughs> oh boy, this is our third attempt to land this rover on Duna. I I don't like to admit how many times I have failed this, but it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and execute this next node, which is just a, a simple breaking burn once we get to our apoapsis over Duna over here. And that'll just be a simple 900 meter per second burn. Shouldn't be too, too bad. It is like a year away, though, so maybe I should have warped there before I started this episode. Hmm. Well, one thing I do want to check here. Yep, okay. We've got our Communitron here. That's all completely fine. This is, of course, a new session, so I don't actually know everything that I knew before. <laughs> so it's a little bit awkward. We've got our reaction wheel on here. That's nice. We've got our more powerful engines here. We've got these big old solar arrays that we're going to stow when we enter the atmosphere for sure. I mean, we're going to do the same thing with this communicatron over here. So, I mean, overall, we basically just need to hurry up and warp on over here. As you can see, I've also restarted my computer, and that seems to have at least minimized the stuttering. There is still a little bit here and there, but it, it's, it's certainly less. Okay, so we've got another 40 days here. That's not too bad. Here we come. We can probably see Duna from here. Don't actually know where it is, but probably visible. I would think it'd be in this plane, but maybe not. But well, we're definitely over Duna. There it is. Hi, Duna. Okay, we will be doing this breaking burn with our first stage, I would like to point out. This is the stage that we launched with, and we're doing our breaking burn over Duna, and we're almost going to complete it. We're not quite going to complete it, but it's going to be close. Like... We've still massively overbuilt this, even though we dropped a fuel tank out of our maneuvering stage. Kinda ridiculous. Okay, so we are going to be ditching this stage here at long, long last, here in about five seconds. Right about now. There we go. Glorious. And now we've only got, like, 40 meters per second on this nuclear engine to go, so it's not that bad. Let's take a quick look here. Oh my. <laughs> that was an interesting Ike encounter. We are not particularly interested in that as of right now. So at this point, all we really want to do, we're already pretty well equatorial, it would appear. Our inclination here is pretty close to 180 degrees, so we are going against the grain of the planet is interesting like the we're going this way i think but duna's rotating this way or something like that no we're we're going this way and duna's rotating this way so i think all we want to do up here is a very very simple flipping of our directionality i want to be going the same way as Duna. And I don't want to be 345 meters out, or 1,000 meters out. That's not really what I'm looking to do here. Uh, 54 kilometers, that's a little close, maybe like 60. Right about... Come on, a little bit closer. There, I like that. Execute that node. So that'll flip our directionality and get our inclination much more close to equatorial. And this way, when we go down, we will not be going against the rotation of the planet. We'll be going with the rotation of the planet. That should make it a little easier to slow down with regards to the planet. Okay. We'll be doing this burn very, very, very shortly. To be precise in about three minutes. 69 meters per second, 69.2 to be precise. So that's very, very little delta V. Like, we have 
we have enough to go back to Kerbin. And then probably come back to Duna again, twice over. It, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> oh, this thing is so overbuilt. Oh well, better to be overbuilt than underbuilt. And more meters per second. Excellent. And then I'm just going to do a very simple circularization at the periapsis. I'm going to use MechJeb for that because I'm feeling lazy today. So create and execute. Fantastic. That's perfect. Good job, MechJeb. I mean, we could even change our inclination if we were so inclined. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, that was a terrible pun. We could change our inclination. We're about two degrees off of pure equatorial. I don't know that that's strictly necessary. I mean, it's not going to make any real changes. So this is going to be another breaking burn down at the periapsis of about 355 meters per second. I am going to go ahead and physics warp up for it because it'll be a pretty lengthy burn with with this here atomic engine. So let's go ahead and do that. It'll be about two and a half minutes. And in the meantime, I was thinking, I don't want to do this flight again. Maybe I should make a manual non-quick save up at this orbit just to be safe in case I completely fail this again. We're not going to do a mystery goo observation here. Where is our connection to? This one? Okay. That's not bad. Yeah, I think I am going to go ahead and make that save here. So let's do a full-on save, and we'll save this as don't mess this up. There we go. Okay. Now hopefully we won't mess it up. So the next thing we want to do is decide where approximately we want to land. And honestly, I think anywhere over here is fine. We've got good satellite coverage. So I think what we do is we go ahead and these are both going this direction. So we go ahead and land somewhere around here-ish. But we're going to need to do an orbit quick. Which is going to be exciting. I mean, the other thing we could do is we could just not do an orbit and just start burning surface velocity minus right now. Be a little awkward, but we have a save. What could go wrong? Let's give it a go. <laughs> okay, so we are now descending. And I want to be impacting right around here. ish. But we're not going to cut our engines anytime soon. We are going to go ahead and deploy our drogue chutes right now, although we're going to set them to the absolute minimum pressure and the absolute maximum altitude. And they'll just automatically deploy very soon. We're going to go ahead and stow these solar panels. I don't think we have any need for them right now. There we go. And I'm going to try retracting this antenna. Yeah, we're still good on our signal strength. Excellent. So with that retracted, let's take a quick look here at our descent path. Okay, it's a little terrible, <laughs> but that's fine. Our thrust to weight on this is 0.81 right now, and as we burn it down, that will continue to go up. Let's see here, where is our time to impact at? Is that under landing? Yeah. That's fine. Impact altitude appears to be going up, KER. What, what are you doing? Our vertical speed is increasing, but our horizontal speed is decreasing. Okay. I mean, there's basically nothing to aero break with here, so I'm going to treat this as essentially a powered landing. There we 
There we go. Our vertical speed is still increasing. We are up to 0.82 thrust to weight ratio in this stage. Hopefully, by the time we impact here in four minutes, apparently, well, yeah, about four minutes, hopefully by then our thrust to weight will have reached 1.0 and we can actually fight against gravity. That would be nice. I'm going to go ahead and physics warp up for a little bit here. I just want to see... Yeah... I don't think we actually are going to be hitting 1.0, that is. We only have two minutes left and we're at 0.85. But we are in the atmosphere, we are slowing down substantially. Our horizontal speed is almost gone. Ish. <laughs> and we are transitioning over to burning purely vertical, just about. Well, we're about halfway between. We're at about a 45 degree angle right now. But we are slowly decreasing our speeds. We're at 0.87 thrust to weight. So we are not really fighting against gravity very well here. We are currently at about one minute to impact, but you can see that we are fighting against gravity kind of effic efficiently because our impact time is going down substantially. So we are currently at a horizontal speed of 140 meters per second. What I'm more concerned about is our vertical speed right now, but we are transitioning to fighting more vertical and less horizontal, which is good. Our vertical is still increasing. We are about a minute out from impact right now. Of course, we are further than a minute from impact because this is much more than a second per second going down because we're fighting against gravity pretty substantially at 0.89 efficiency. So gravity is still winning a little bit, but not a ton. How is our horizontal speed right now? Uh, we're getting there. 80 meters per second. Vertical speed is actually decreasing as well now. So we are now starting to beat gravity, and there go our drogue shoots. That's excellent. With that being the case, we are currently 30 seconds from impact. I think we ditch this stage and start operating this. Let's do it. Okay. There we go. And how, how are we doing here in terms of speed? We're doing decently. Let's go ahead and grab a temperature scan, atmospheric pressure, and atmospheric analysis, and we will merely keep those for now, since we're flying low. Oh, experiment is stowed. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this, keep the experiment, and close. Okay. <laughs> Whoa now. Just stick it up at this point. That's all we really need to do. Okay, so we are currently about 30 seconds from impact. There we go. I kind of want to not have gimbling on these. Because we're kind of going all over the place. Okay, where are we at? 40 meters per second, that's fine. Can we afford surface velocity at this point? I think we can, now that we don't have gimbling on. We should turn on our brakes, and I'm going to make a quick save at this point. That will not overwrite the save we made earlier. Millimeters per second horizontally, so let's just stick it up for now. Okay. We are currently about 25 seconds to impact. We have plenty of delta V left in this thing, 55 seconds. 
It's going to keep doing little breaking burns like that. Okay, I'm going to bring us down to right at about... Okay, let's just start descending here. Keep it. Try to keep it right around 6 meters per second or so. Eh, maybe a little lower. Okay. 14 seconds to impact. And let's go ahead and decrease our velocity here. Where's our shadow? Is that supposed to be our shadow? I think that's our landing location. What's doing that? KER just updated. Maybe that's what's happening there. That's interesting. Okay, let's keep this a bit slower. At about 6 meters per second, we'll drop down a little bit. At 4, we'll drop down a little bit more. And now we are accelerating. At 5, I'm going to bring it up slightly. Bring it down slightly. Ooh, this is nice. This is very nice. That must be KER there, doing that. We are moving at about 1.6 meters per second horizontally, but that's okay. Our brakes should be able to handle that. 2.7, 2 2.6, 2 2.5, 2.4, 2.3. Oh, I messed that up really badly. Okay. Let's uh, surface velocity minus it a bit here. Oh boy. Okay. We're good. <laughs> oh, I tried to fail that. But I did not succeed in failing this time. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to make a quick save here. And we are going to extend our antenna. And we have a good connection here. So let's go ahead and transmit all of our data that we've got. And let's also extend our solar panels here so that we and make sure that we actually have the power for this. We'll detach our sky crane in a moment. But for right now, I'm far more interested in getting this data transmitted that we gathered through the atmosphere, and then we'll transmit our data on the ground, and then we'll detach our sky crane. Okay, 80% done uploading data. That's fantastic. There we go. Data uploaded. Fantastic. Next, let's grab a temperature scan and we'll transmit. We'll just move all of these down here for now. Let's grab an atmospheric pressure scan and transmit that. There we go. We will do a mystery goo observation from here, since this is the best data we're going to get out of that. Yep, go ahead and transmit. Okay, let's do a seismic scan. That'll be almost 90 science. That's pretty fancy. There we go. What did we actually can complete here? Science data from surface of Duna. Gotcha. Okay, let's do a gravity scan. And then we'll need to open up our service bay. And run an atmospheric analysis and transmit that. Fantastic. We can go ahead and close our service bay now. And then as soon as this is done uploading, I'm going to retract these panels, put this array away, and then we are going to try to detach our sky crane, since we don't need it anymore. But for now, we are going to finish up uploading our data. I think I can go ahead and get rid of these now. There we go. 
Okay, and let's retract our antenna. And I'm going to make yet another save, because I've had bad luck with detaching these things. <laughs> so, uh... The, the main problem is I can't do it extremely quickly. So maybe what we want to do is just very slightly throttle this thing up. To the point where it's just about lifting us off. And then detach that. There we- whoa. Okay. <laughs> there goes our antenna. I was afraid of that. But that's why I made that save. Let's go ahead and load our quick save, which was after this, so it would be the persistent save. So yeah, I mean, the answer there is we need to not go that fast, because that caused it to flip up in a really awkward fashion. Luckily, we've already done all of our science, so I just... I, I don't want to admit defeat on yet another one, so I'm going to just reload here. There we go. So, can we... Nope. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's just go ahead and leave this where it's at. Throttle this guy up. Not quite that high, but pretty close. And detach him off of there. There we go. Beautiful. That was perfect. Okay. Go ahead and toggle these on. And let's see how we're doing for energy flow. Looks like not great is the answer to that. Well, that's some interesting jerking going on there. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and point our solar panels there, and we can also extend our better solar panels. And also we can put our antenna back. There we go. So this thing is now safely-ish on the surface of Duna. I mean, I say ish, but it is actually safely here. We'll, we'll just have to be careful while driving it. So I'm going to go ahead and make another save here because we successfully detached, which is always a bit exciting. And let's go ahead and head on back to the Space Center and determine what we're going to do next. I think, if I recall correctly, we don't yet have a rover on Ike. Uh -huh. Let's see what we've got here. We have Explore Kerbin active. Plant Flag on the Moon, no thanks. Plant Flag on Eve, no thanks. Satellite in Stationary Orbit of Jewel. Now that's something we can do. We would need to have a materials bay on the satellite. That's uh, a little unfortunate. But we could still do that. That's not a big problem. Go ahead and accept that one. Specific orbit of Ike. We've already got one around Ike. I think we'll not do that one for now. Let's head into R&D and see about spending our 1500 science. I mean, we, we don't quite have enough to max everything out yet. We could grab high performance fuel systems. I don't know that we're going to be using these curvidine parts very much. Alternately, we could grab the narrowband scanner or the large probe core. I think RTGs are going to be the more the most valuable thing here though going forward because we're going to be getting pretty far from the sun here pretty soon. So we'll go ahead and grab RTGs. And now the question is, do we want to put a rover on Ike or do we want to put that satellite over Jewel? We don't have a rover on Ike right now. And as far as this contract for Jewel goes, when does that expire? 29 years. So we could do it in either way. 
But let's pop into the VAB here. And let's just open ourselves up the Odd One Mark IV. Is I think the one we're looking for. Yes. So this thing has everything on it that we need, correct? Well, we don't have a gravioli detector on here, apparently. Thought we did. We do. We have a mystery goo unit on here. And we do not... And we want to hold stationary orbit directly above area DB0. That'll be exciting. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be exciting indeed. We don't just have to hit the orbit, we have to hit the orbit at a particular time. I don't think that'll be too, too hard. Okay, so all we need on this thing is a materials bay. We'll call this the Auto and Mark IV Stupid Edition, because having a materials bay on here is stupid. <laughs> but we'll we'll just toss a Science Junior on there, I guess. The real question is where? Maybe on top? Do we have to adjust our fairing? Hmm. I don't think these parts are physics up here. Yeah, they, they don't have a collider. So I think them sticking through is fine. This is still really stupid. But I think we're going to go ahead and do this, and I'm going to put a cut in here, and that'll be for next episode. See you all then.